God that we have another opportunity to study his word. Thank God for another beautiful day that he spares us to get it right with him once again. Don't we serve a loving God that he looked beyond our faults and he seen our needs? And it's, it's, a, it's a, a pleasure to know that God never sleep nor slumber, that he hear your cry in the midnight hour. No matter what you're going through, he have what open ears to hear what we have to say. And I just want to thank God for this opportunity, for my pastor, the opportunity to teach on these different characters as we go through the, uh, the book of the Bible. And it's, ve it's been a very uh, interesting study of these characters because sometimes in these characters you see yourself. And sometimes then God will show you where you need to improve in your life. And my prayer is that as we hear these different characters, that we um, apply these di different things to our life and give God opportunity to prune those things that are not of him that's in our life to, to take it away from us because God always want to take us to another dimension in him. We serve a God that looks beyond our faults, like I said earlier. And the thing about it, God did not hold us uh, accountable for the things that we do unless we come to him and believe that he, uh, he forgives us our sins. At this time, we... Uh, I have the opportunity to, uh, to study the character Seth. Before before we go into Seth, let's uh, say a word of prayer. Father God, we come right now in the powerful name of Jesus. We just want to thank you for another opportunity to gather once again. Thank you for who you are. You are the sustainer. You are the creator of, earth, of heaven and earth, Father. There's none like you, Father. But we ask you right now, Father, let something be said that we can take with us right now, Father. Let your word, let your word go down in the depths of our hearts, our minds, and our, in our, in our hearts, Father God. We just want to thank you right now for who you are. You are the sustainer. You are the rule of heaven and earth, Father God. We just want to thank you right now for who you are, Father God. Forgive us for taking you for granted right now, Father. Breathe on your word right now, Father. I ask you to let your word go forth in the name of Jesus. And we just want to thank you for who you are. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said earlier, I just want to thank God and Pastor William for giving me this opportunity to teach about self, teach about different characters of the Bible. Like I said, but God will open your eyes up when you study these different, even when you study in the Bible, he will open your eyes up to certain things that will um, make you change if you want to change. But thank God that uh, he opened our eyes up so we can see. As studying the book, uh, I mean, as studying the character of, of Seth, I went back and started from the very beginning, how God established first the family. The purpose of, the, of the, the family was to worship God, to praise God, because he, he says in his word that he walked with uh, Adam at the cool of the day. So that means that Adam had a relationship with God to know who God really is in, uh, in his life. So God expects the same thing to, uh, from us, to have a relationship with us so we can understand who he is in our life. And one thing I come to find out that uh, through scripture that uh, Adam and Eve taught their sons how to worship. They taught, they taught their son how to worship because we can see that through the offering. Offering was a type of worship that we, you know, we are honor God with. That's why, you know, when we honor God, we, we, well, we should worship God with our, ti with our tithes, talent, and treasure. Because God want, God want the whole person, not half of the person. He want the whole person. So they was brought up to worship God. And it's up to us as parents, God, uh, grandparents, to bring our children up in the, in the word of God so they can grow up and know who God really is. Now, all we are is the message to our children and grandchildren. It's up to them to receive it. So we see it in, in Cain and Abel. Abel received the worship, the, the proper worship of God. He accepted how to worship God. But then we see Cain what? Cain, he did the opposite. He rejected the worship of God. He thought he was the man. So, so that's why what it, uh, it, 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 that's why it caused death upon him because what he didn't properly worship God. So God established that first thing is.
to worship him in, what it, in our giving time and treasure and, and talent. Let's look at uh, verse uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Yeah, I'm sorry, Genesis 1 and 1, I mean, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Eve, first son we see is Cain. So Eve thought that uh, Cain was the, what, the chosen seed from God. So that she thought God would, uh, she thought that the promise came through uh, Cain. She believed her firstborn was the promised seed. And sometimes, you know, God, sometimes God, he will put people or things into our life where we have to make sure it's from God. And the only way we'll know that it's, it, 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 uh, it, it's from God, it would, uh, the things wouldn't put us, it, the things wouldn't be before God. If it's uh, not of God, it would be, be before God. But if of God, it'll be what second. We'll be seeking God first. It is not. It is not for God. No. If things is not of God, it can destroy our lives. If it's not of God, it will destroy our life. It will cause us what depression, oppression. It will cause us what even sometimes it will cause sickness. If in, in our life, if if it's from God, it would not take away our relationship with God. So if if it's from God, it would not take away our relationship from God. It would it would keep us what in a steady in a steady relationship with God. You hear people say God has blessed me with a car, with a house, but if that car, or that house is, is it's keeping you from fellowship and from God, it's not of God. If that house keeping you from fellowship from God, make so you can make overtime to pay that note on, it's not of God. So Eve thought Cain was, the, she thought Cain was the chosen one. He thought she thought that Cain would be the one that would, well, uh, see would pass down through to, uh, to 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 the Messiah. Cain was a type of the natural man, the flesh, and the offspring of uh, of, uh, of the serpent. We see him as a natural man. The first thing Cain did was he built him, as he had his son, he built him a city. That's the first thing he did. A lot of times when we get, uh, when we do fleshly things, we always want to what? Build up ourselves so people can see what we've done in our lives. And uh, another thing about Cain, he had no remorse for the death of his brother. He had no remorse. Let's look at uh, verse 13 of chapter uh, 4. Let's see. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So he wasn't really worrying about the punishment. He was worrying about what was going to happen to him. He didn't care about his brother. He didn't care about what, what just happened because what he was a selfish individual. He was a jealous individual. And sometimes today in the world we have a lot of selfish people. They don't care about the other needs of others. They don't care about, you know, the word of God, how to apply the word of God. So we see Cain as a natural man. There was no, there was no plea for a pardon or expression of sorrow or regret. He just, he just didn't care. He didn't care about his brother's life. He didn't care who, uh, what he did to his brother. Then we see that second son was born with A. The word A means a vapor. So we look at life. Sometimes life can be a vapor. We are here one day and gone the next. Abe is a type of Christ. Abe was a shepherd. He was hated by his brother without a cause. Abe died on account of his brother's sin. Don't that sound like Christ? Don't that sound? He died for our sin. He died for us so we can have a right to the tree of life. How the people what turned him over to uh, Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate, because of what they thought he did crimes. 
So we see that A was a type of Christ. He was a shepherd. He shepherded his sheep, took care of his sheep. Just like Jesus. Jesus take care of us. He take care of us. In the time of our need, in the time of our wants. He's there for us. And then you see that in um in verse four, verse, I mean chapter five, verse twenty-five and six. Let's read that one. Chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, she said she have appointed me another seed instead of Abe, whom Cain slew. And 26 says, and to Seth to him also there was born a son. And he called his name Enoch, that begot men, men to call upon the name of the Lord. So we see two things in this verse from chapter uh, 4, verse 1. She calls on the name of Lord. She said, Jehovah, self-existing God, that I am who I am. So she thought it was coming from the Jehovah, the self-existing God. But in this verse, she says, in verse uh, 25, she said, for God, she said, and then she said, she said, for God said, she, said she have appointed me another seed instead of Abe, whom Cain slew. So right now, she called God right here, Elohim. Elohim. This means the personal, every, the personal Ever present God will meet your need when you when you seek His face first. Elohim is the strong. It means the strong Creator. Elohim means that God, what He's our what the provider. Elohim can do anything for you that you couldn't even imagine. Thank God for Elohim that what He looked beyond our faults and He seen our need. So she knew the difference between. Um, Jehovah self-existing and she knew them uh, call him on Elohim because she knew that he was the creator he was the creator of creatures so she knew that he could supply uh, her her needs now can you imagine Eve you can imagine Eve, she just lost one of her sons to murder and then she lost another son what to the world you can imagine what the thing she's going through God promised the seed coming through her and she's like Lord where is the seed coming from? And she's like, uh, Lord, I know you promised me this. I know you promised. Sometimes God would promise us something, but we have to wait. She had to wait. She had to wait. To, and then she had to bear all this, losing her children and seeing all this corruption and going on in her family. You know, I can imagine she constantly on her knees. Lord, where is that seed? Lord, where is the, the one that you sent, the one you said that will, um, save the world. Where is that seed? But thank God that we in our need. So Seth was born. Seth is the third son of Adam and Eve. Seth's name means appointed. So God had appointed appointed Seth to carry the, what the seed, his seed to um for the Messiah, to, through the Messiah. Seth were destined to carry out the purpose of God plan for salvation through Jesus Christ. Ain't God good? He knew that we was going to mess up. He knew our situation. So he placed that seed in self that we have a, a, a way back to him, that we can be reconciled back to him. He knew it before we, he knew it before we even knew that we was going to sin. He knew this. So he prepared he prepared through self the seed to go through him through Jesus Christ that we would have a way back to Jesus. Self was a son just like his father Adam. Suggests that self was the worthy heirs to Adam's legacy. Let's look at uh, chapter 5 verse 3. It says, and Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begotten his son in his own likeness and after his image and called his name Seth. Now think about it. It was Seth descendants 
who held out, who held unto God's teaching and survived the flood. It was self-generation because Noah came through the self-generation. So God used what? Self-generation to carry on during the flood of the uh, during the flood period. And, and another thing is you read chapter 5 when it gives you the, the, the lineage of uh, Adam, it does not mention the lineage of Cain. It gives you the lineage of uh, Seth. So God was saying that what, he would he'll wipe out all evil. No matter what it is, evil do not have a place in, in the kingdom of God. Evil does not exist in the kingdom of God, in, in the kingdom of God, that's why we have to get it right down here because evil does not exist in heaven. So it through self, it through self descendants that eight souls were saved. So the legacy can go on, so we can see why our Savior Jesus Christ self left a spiritual legacy for his family to follow. Let's look at uh, chapter four and verse twenty six again. And self, and to self, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enoch. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. You see it, the, the latter part of it said, then the men began to call upon the name of the Lord. You see the legacy he left, where his generation can call upon the name of God. Not that his generation was sinless, but they knew who to call upon. Uh, is the name of God because as you read during the, the flood it had all kinds of evil things going on during the flood time it was because well, they were righteous because they knew who they got they knew that God would forgive them of the things that they were doing because they believe in the almighty God sometimes God would um, take us through certain situations so he can what, build us up so he can build us so we can leave a legacy on into our to our generation one thing we can learn from self is the value of following our parents teaching about God passing that knowledge onto our children and grandchildren so we have to be what we have to pass this down to our grandchildren and children one thing I like you know as I was growing up my grandfather always when we spent the night my grandfather would always get all the grandchildren all we had all kneel down around the bed and we all prayed. So he was depositing something in us, you know, at that time. And I look at Sister Honey Martin, how she brings her, her, her grandchildren. Something is being deposited in those children at this time. You know, no matter how old they get, you always can deposit a word of God in your children because you want to see your children, your grandchildren have a relationship with God because you know he is the only one that can bring them out of that that situation and self knew this self was living in an environment where all uh, uh, sin was uh, uh, was on the own high it's nothing new under the sun it's nothing new under the sun what we're going through they went through it but we might be it might it's new to us but we have what the right to the tree of life and the good thing about it we have grace we have grace and we can get it right over and over again. So self knew that um, if he was to stay in tune with God, that his legacy would, would trigger down all the way down to uh, Noah and all the way down to Jesus Christ. When you know when you implanted the word in God, you know that your children will see their way through their situation. It may not seem like it. It may not seem like it, but it will in the end. It, it, it will in the end. We just have to have faith that we know that it's working for their good. You know, sometimes it, it takes us patience and faith to hold on to what God said. Even though when Eve knew that God was going to use her for the seed to come down, she had to have what? Faith and patience. But sometimes we get anxious. But sometimes we, we you know, we be wanting right then and there. But sometimes God will what, say we're not ready for it right now. She couldn't, she probably couldn't handle it at the time. But God will had, he had appointed time for her to handle, you know, that situation. So she knew him as she learned the different, if she learned um, that he was Elohim, 
She knew that uh, he, he, he can do anything but fail. And sometimes we have to know God. God will take us through situations in our life where we can call upon his name. He might take us in a situation where we don't have food on our table, where we know that Jehovah Jireh. He'll take us through a situation that's it's chaotic around us. We'll know him as um, Jeho Jehovah Shalom, God of peace. And then we, and sometimes he'll lead us and guide us. We'll know him as well, Jehovah Rapha. He's our shepherd. He will take us through situations so we can depend upon him. And that's what he was doing with Seth. He was grooming Seth. Seth, Seth was also known as the spiritual child because of what he carried on, the legacy what God started with Adam and Eve. Because you see it in verse, I mean, chapter 5 and verse 1 and 2. It says, it, this is the book of the generation of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created so you see that he says in the likeness of God made he him so our, our the likeness of God is what to worship with God to commune with God so self he passed this through self through what teaching training Showing self that um that God was the only way that can get him out of his situation. And a lot of times we have to what? Endure certain things to know that God will get us out of our situation. We say we born again believers in Jesus Christ. We say we can handle it, but anytime a storm come on, who are we calling on? Who we um are we calling on the name of Jesus? Are we looking for self help books? It's the answer right in here. Seth will call on the name of Jesus because it says, then began men to call upon the name of Jesus, of our Lord, Elohim, Je Jehovah, call upon the name of Jehovah. And one thing about when you call upon the name of Je Jehovah, he will answer. He will answer. One of my favorite, one of my favorite Psalms, 121, because what he never sleeps nor slumbers. He will answer. But as I was studying, as I was studying this, God showed me that we got to pass it down. We got to pass the gospel down. It can be cousins, it can be grandchildren, children, friends. We have to pass it down because it is up to us as born again believers in Jesus Christ to pass it down so people can be saved. We we say we Christian. Are we representing that of being a Christian? How you represent of being a Christian? First you spread, first you come into a, what, a saving knowledge. Then you be reconciled back to God. And then once you come into that saving knowledge, now you have a duty. Now you have a, uh, a duty to do. That is what? To spread the gospel. To spread, to tell someone about the gospel. And you can look at self situation. He could have been shamed of the gospel because his situation, he had murders right around. He had cousins who had two or three wives. He could have he could have did all that, but what he stood on the word of God. Because he knew there was liberty in the word of God. He knew there was life in the word of God. Once we learn how to stand up on the word of God, we can conquer any mountain that's in our way. And once we plant those seeds in our children, we know one thing, they can deal with any situation in life. It's all in God's time. It's all in God's time when they really receive that word. We just a messenger. And Seth knew he was just a messenger. Because later on you can see um, in one of the gospels that he was a prophet. He spoke God's word. And he, through his sons, Enoch, he spoke God's word. And my prayer is that we continue to study God's word, to continue to plant seeds among our loved ones and those that, that those that who do not believe, we have to be a type of self and let the legacy keep flowing and flowing and flowing. It feel good when you see your child praising God. It, good, it feel good when you get a phone call and your child says, well, I just prayed for the situation and God showed me. That, that brings joy to your heart. You know your child has received 
what God has for them. Even though it took you many nights uh, wearing your knees out and praying, but it, it make you feel good to know they know who Jesus is. And that's the bottom line. That's, that will get them to heaven when they know who Jesus is. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for who you are, Father. But let them something be said that we can take with us right now, Father. Touch our minds and our hearts, Father. And we just want to thank you in Jesus' name, Father. Go with them, lead them, and guide us. Father God, we ask you to remove any fear that's in our hearts and our minds, Father. Give us power to stand for you, Father. Give us power to, to spread your gospel, the good news, Father. Because it, it is the good news that will save us, Father. And we just want to thank you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.